So with that, I want you to continue to enjoy your lunch, but I want to introduce our keynote speaker to start the program, Mr. Marcus Hogue. Please join me at this stage. Well, Marcus is walking up. Marcus is at the forefront of innovation, whether it's his time spent at the University of Texas at Austin overseeing geospatial information and drones, or assisting the National Security Innovation Unit with new concepts to keep our military secure. In 2017, he won the Texas Environmental Excellence Award in water conservation for implementing an innovative way to conserve irrigation water, and get this, reducing the University of Texas at Austin's outside water usage by 75%. So his keynote address today is gonna to factor in how all of these factors play a role in economic development projects here in Central Texas, and preview how the future of our growth will be innovatively built. Marcus, it's all yours. All right, thank you everyone. I'm gonna take the mic off. I like to move while I present. For some reason, I always get put after lunch. So I'm gonna keep y'all awake while you eat, give you a little overview of what we have going on at the University of Texas. And I wanna start off in talking about innovation. We all have different aspects that we are innovating. Now, I get the privilege of discussing mainly the topic of drones and GIS we have on campus. One nice thing about being at the university is I get research dollars coming in to do these research projects. That way I can take this information and share it out with you all. I don't have to worry about a bottom line. I don't have to worry about if an idea is going to succeed or fail until it does. So today's presentation is gonna go over some of the stuff that we've learned, information about what we have and things that you can utilize for your own business. At the end, it'll have my contact information. So if you have any questions, feel free, let me know. UT has a motto. What starts here changes the world. So anything that you see here, come ask those questions, learn and see how we can improve on things. But the topic we're talking about tonight, I love. This topic right here, drones. First off and foremost is a big thing coming in. How many of y'all have seen them up in the air flying around? Everybody's seen them. Well, how many people have a perspective on drones? Let me see if I can. There we go have this perspective when they see it. They worry, they freak out. New innovation causes concern a lot of times. You've heard of disruptors, people coming in and trying out new things. Well, on campus, when we started flying drones around, this is the response we got on one of our primary magazines. People panicked. They see a drone up in the air and they wonder, is it gonna drop a bomb on us? Is there something gonna happen? Are they spying on the students in the dormitories? Well, today's presentation is how you can use this technology to change the view and help your business out. So we go from the perspective of this to the perspective of this, how we're working with students with drones, conserving water, working on management of new projects, working on many different aspects on the campus. And that is vital because what we're doing on the campus can translate to what is going on in this Texas corridor of innovation, which is huge. I mean, $2 billion of last year, didn't even know that amount was coming into the area. So the stuff that you're gonna see today is the research we're doing on and moving forward, some lessons learned, some other things going on, but trying to explain how we're moving forward. Now again, when I first thought of drones on the campus, I thought a few areas would be interested. And I was quite impressed with a number of different academic groups and internal groups that wanted drones on campus. As you can read on the list here, unless you're in the back, and I've learned if you're in the back, you can't read much text on these screens. Don't worry, there's a lot of videos and pictures. But all these groups wanted a piece of the drone. They wanted to see how they can utilize it for their class. One thing we've learned is innovative ideas tend to get youth out. So the students loved working with the drone. They heard about it, they would sign up for the classes, and they would move forward. So many businesses out there hear about the same thing and are looking to the next level. I mean, we've heard about Amazon wanting to make deliveries. I've seen Pizza Hut making deliveries in the air and delivering things. Medicine, medical devices, you name it, people are looking at that because they know one thing, just like we know. 35 is a pain to drive on. And if I get something delivered by air where I don't have to get out on it, the better. And all this new construction coming to the area is great, but again, those roadways are gonna get more packed. Now, working with the Army, DOD, we are looking at large-sized drones to move military equipment. 
But what that means is we might be able to move away from some of the semis being on the road and having it delivered by larger sized drones. Small size equipment can be done, but moving into the next level. Well, all these groups here are taking interest and feeding supplies and moving forward because one other thing at the university is we get research money. And we get a lot of research money at the University of Texas. So a lot of these ideas and concepts that will benefit your business, your idea, is being funneled and tested out on the campus. So you don't have to burn through your money in R&D. Come look what's going on on the campus and see how we are moving that technology to the next level. And that is very important. I want to stress that here. Is University of Texas has a lot of stuff coming through and we're doing research, but we need those partnerships with others on building out the idea. I've got a professor working on an idea with an Oculus Quest, virtual reality, where he's wanting to create a system where he can come in, do a virtual walkthrough through a business, and actually buy items and use that for a class project. The only problem is, is he's not connected with any businesses in the new area, building up. Well, the Innovation Corridor would be a great opportunity where if you have a business that it sounds appeasing, something that would benefit you, he is looking for a business to partner with. If he can't find a business, he's going to build it for the university. But again, what does that benefit the students? They need that real world connection with it. As we all know, if you're being out into the workforce, you've got to have stuff on your resume. And how many people try to apply to a job and say, you don't have enough experience? Well, having those connections in on these new ideas help with that experience. And you all out there had those opportunities that those students are longing for. The university has a lot of funds to support it. Let's combine those areas up as we move forward. Because some of the research you see here that we're going to showcase are some of the stuff that is moving into that next level. Because we've got to have that cooperation. Now, again, robotics is a big group on campus that I'm tied into. A lot of them are doing many different activities that will assist with this next stage. When I view ideas and concepts, I don't look at tomorrow, next week, next month. I'm looking at five, ten years down the line. If we're looking that short-sighted on innovative ideas, you lose out. Now, of course, short wins and innovation is great. You need to look at that next month, week, year, whatever. But for big size projects, you need to think long term. How many people have seen the Tesla semis out there and they're working on autonomous systems to be able to deliver where you don't need that man behind the wheel moving forward? Well, some of the robotics that we're doing on campus is moving that forward. One aspect that I have on campus that I love with the robotics is getting through campus. How many of y'all been to the University of Texas? A lot of y'all. So on any given day, pre-COVID, we'd have around 70,000 people on our campus. Well, that is a huge number when you're trying to get from one side of the campus to the other. And our workers on campus were moving back and forth, not realizing it took us on average three and a half hours every day to drive around campus because when class change happens, everything shuts down. Well, if I can deliver equipment using autonomous drones to deliver materials, if I could have a robot uh, deliver that to that building where I don't have to go back across campus to gather that, it reduces time. Well, things can be done on campus. Imagine what their business is right now. Having those deliveries done early in the morning by equipment, or if you need something quick, having a drone bring it to you and deliver it to you out in the field, reducing that amount of time you're on those roads. Because we hear about all this great development, they're going to have to catch up with the roadways. And as we all know, roadways are never first. It's always after the fact as they study the traffic patterns. So you're stuck in that traffic, seeing those yellow cones and trying to get by time and time again. Well, we're looking at ways of delivering equipment out into the field where you don't have to have that travel time. Reducing the amount of cars on the street, trying to find alternative ways of getting that out there. So different groups on campus, these are only just a few. There is quite a bit of different campuses or aspects on campus doing research and you name it. Uh, we've got 3D printers printing things off from old pieces of equipment. If you have an idea and you're needing to move forward and you hit a roadblock, come to University of Texas and ask, or you got Texas State here, come and talk to them. We're wanting those partnerships to move things forward because again, you don't want to work on a project just out of a book. Let's give the students a real life experience. Become a living laboratory and that's what the campus wants to move towards. Now the drones we use on campus, everything that you're going to see here, we do not endorse anything. 
as a university. We can't, and I want to stipulate that down. These are things that we found out over the years have worked for us. So the drones we see on the campus are the ones here. Now the M600 and the M300, we try to keep that when there's not 70,000 people around. Uh, our biggest fear is one of these falling out of the air and hitting someone. I don't want to be on national television because of that, so we try to keep these on the weekends. We use a lot of the Phantom 4 Pros, but again, there is a lot of different drones on the market. One thing with drones and technology is just like this. Every year, a new one is coming out. If you don't have something in a drone, something that you need, wait a year. It's going to be developed because with innovation, they're coming up with new ideas. Um, as we progress through the size and needs, people see it. And until you start putting it into action, people don't know what they really need. Because when we first started the project with the M600, that was for a Department of Energy project, looking at grasses, and they're carrying different camera systems on it. So not even using that in other ways, but now they're using those grasses as they put on the side of roadways to keep the erosion from coming down and washing it out. Different little tech that is being used, but ways to make improvements off of it. But the biggest thing about these drones is the camera systems, what they can carry. LiDAR is number one. That is the big one right now with new construction. A lot of your projects that are going on, your area in San Marcos and around, is using LiDAR. You need to know precisely the details of what is there, what is existing. You had the old ways out where you have someone sitting there scanning the equipment. Now I can fly a site with LiDAR and have that information within 10, 20 minutes cutting down on the cost, cutting down on the time, and getting that out there. We're going to see some samples of what we're doing with this imaging later on, but I want to just go over the cameras because it changes with everything. So you've got a new drone, well, you've got to look at the cameras that we're having out there, and those are the innovative ideas and concepts that are coming out. So another one, hyperspectral. This right here is very hard to explain. It basically looks at different wavelengths coming off everything. Um, plants have a certain wavelength, or uh, asphalt that is failing, and we're finding those issues before they have a problem. So we're trying to find the right wavelength to use. So if we scan over a roadway, where a pothole is going to show up, we can gather that information with hyperspectral, and then we take that information out and share it with the county. So that way he can fly those areas and capture it without waiting until that pothole pops up and then try to solve it before. We all love those potholes and that wet season's coming around. Now infrared thermal is what we're using mainly on campus. A lot of y'all have rooftops. If you have a building with rooftop, you know that is the most issue if you have water penetration as you will have flooding on your site. With a thermal, we are flying different rooftops. I have some samples later on. It's been a huge saving to the campus. But another aspect we come through is we're using this for search and rescue. Thermal right now is a huge help, and we learned this after Hurricane Harvey. I work with Search and Rescue as we come in and we fly sites. I can put a drone up and cover an area very quickly and spend, instead of spending a helicopter flying a site. Most law enforcement agencies in our area are now utilizing this drone technology. After the last tornado came through the Austin area, we got calls and we were immediately out flying those areas to see if we can find people with the thermal cameras. We leave the helicopters for bigger size and quicker spaces, but you can get a team of drones out there very quickly. I know the Houston area has a huge collaboration with the University of Texas and other law enforcement where if we do have a large hurricane come through the area, we come and take a look at it. But another reason I mentioned the thermal camera is we also have re students working on research where they're taking those thermal images where I might have a rooftop with a 20, 30 images I need to know where the area is. Well, they're taking that same technology to find the problem of the area where I can fly a site for a thousand images looking for a missing person and find that heat signature to let the search and rescue teams know where to go. Again, having that technology out there quickly and fairly cheap. The next, next uh, camera is high definition, high detail camera. As you saw, the Phantom 4 has a 20 megapixel. If you know much about cameras, that's decent, but not great. Well, of course, there's new systems out there. You can get very fine, crisp images. You can fly higher. You can capture larger sizes and go from there. Now, the next one I use a lot on campus is multispectral. That lets me know plant health. And what we use this for is mainly true, or the trees. 
As we know, our governor was jogging a while back in Austin, and a tree limb fell and broke his back, and that's why he's in a wheelchair. On our campus, we have a lot of trees. Well, those trees, after storms, will have broken limbs. And those broken limbs is hard to see from the ground. And when you have 70,000 students walking across that area, it is easy for one of those that could fall down and hit one of the students. So we take that information into account, and we're studying and watching those tree canopies. But you all had the same thing as well on your sites. You're going to have trees. You're going to have cities. You're going to have large areas. Texas State has a huge tree canopy. Having that area monitor and keeping track of those is vital, but also for the beauty of the area. We don't want to be in the middle of a city and just be nothing but concrete. People love walking out, especially during the summertime when it's 110 degrees outside. You want that shade from those trees, and we're able to monitor our tree inventory and keep up with it. Because for the University of Texas, our tree inventory is about $25 million investment for the campus. If we've lost that, it would be a huge detriment to the campus. And we have areas that back in the 70s, we actually had students chain themselves to trees so they didn't cut down. So now we take very care of our trees and do extra to keep up and monitor them. So the cameras are one thing. The next thing here is how do we use that information to move forward? And this is a site that's in the area, San Marcos area, where we can actually take a drone, Let's see if the video will work. Nope. Let's see if I can go back. Okay, so the video is not playing on this one here. Uh, let's see if we can get it, if we can click and activate it. So this right here is a site. They're using a drone image as it flies around, but we can superimpose what a new building is going to look like. So that way you can see what new buildings on your campus, in your area, all these new designs for the Hill Country are going to be able to view it, and they're working on it right now. Because I get asked that question a lot. What is that new building going to look like? You're capturing the LIDAR, you're capturing all those. What is it actually going to look like when it gets developed? Let's see it pop up. Any luck? Okay. So we're going to go to the next one. So there's different technologies moving forward and be able to view it. Another thing that we're looking at right now is using that LIDAR and putting that image into Unreal Engine or Unity taking things to the next level. What we've learned is the drone is a great tool, just like a hammer. But what you need is the tech behind it to move it forward. So we're seeing the software is the next level. This is where the innovation is coming to next. And there's a lot of companies coming out working with different ideas and concepts. So right now you're going to see gaps and holes. We're working through to fill those out with uh, students in uh, computer science. They're trying to take our drone images and put them into Unreal Engine. So if we have a site, and on campus, we have cranes coming through making big deliveries. How does that get through the campus without destroying things? We can put it into Unreal Engine and actually put in that crane and watch it move through the campus itself. We can put in a new building and put in basically students and faculty and AI and watch how they move through that building. Watch how AI. How many of y'all played Sims? Probably very few. Actually, wow, Sims, perfect. So as you know, they had that AI and they move around. They'll get hungry. They got to use the restroom. They got to do different areas. Well, you can have a building and have that AI in there and see how people are moving through that building before it gets even developed. Huge step moving forward. I know we hear a term called cattle trails, and most people don't know, but a cattle trail is an area in the landscape where students, they find the shortest path from point A to point B, and they go that path. They're not going to walk and follow the sidewalk around. They're going to go from point A to point B as quick as possible. Using this AI, we're trying to see how those characters move through before we actually put the sidewalks in and see that information live. See it before it actually happens and actually put on your headset, your Oculus or other virtual reality, walk the site before it's built. Next level stuff is you're moving forward and seeing that area, and that has been a huge step forward in moving through. This is Alex Witt's project. He's been doing great work. He's moving now into the Oculus and more of the other areas, and that's the one looking for other projects outside of UT. But we're wanting to move away from the philosophy of, here's a picture. No, here's a video. Yeah. We want to be immersive into it. Think about, and you've heard of the term metaverse, and I'm moving the campus into the metaverse right now, where students... You can be local or you can be across the world, put on a headset, walk the campus 
walk into the building and go on your professor. A lot of the professors are doing their videos on YouTube. Literally click the YouTube and watch the video. See your students next to you left and right. Go to a football game. Watch the game. The NBA is already doing this right now. Order food to be delivered using Uber Eats. And you never leave your house. You never leave your dormitory. If you're sick and other things that can't do it, having that connection in it and seeing the others walk around the campus. If you're trying to increase students to your campus, put it in the metaverse and have that opportunity where it's out there. But if you have a business in the South, have that open to your clientele. There's people working on concepts of having malls actually in the virtual world. People don't want to be physical to a mall, but you can come into the virtual reality and have that same feel. Come to areas, have an avatar, put the clothes on the avatar and see what you want to have and then buy what you need. Have those clients come to you without going out into the world and we're developing that technology as we move into the next level. When we get done with this project here, we're going to create an SOP, basically a way of going through and repeating this process and we're going to give it out. We're not going to charge, we want to give it out because we want others moving into the same field of work. If we can create it on the campus, so can you all move into that next level. Now another thing we have right now, and I'm hoping this video will play as well. Is it not going to play? This one right here is McDonald Observatory. How many of y'all been out there to see the McDonald Observatory? Probably, hey, higher numbers than I thought. Beautiful sight. What we've done is we put this also into Unreal Engine to walk the site. We can get down all the way down to the ground level and walk it, or we can fly for the air and be able to see the area. But what's big is the topography of the site you can see and you can plan out areas. Now this can be done either in the game, you can put on a headset, you can pull up on your phone, but see this. So all the projects that are being built in San Marcos and around, you can scan them and do that virtual walk of the site and be able to see how things are going in and what does it look like. So if you have an area and you're wanting to draw people into your business, if you've got a shopping center, you can show them the whole area around and what is there and allow them to get down to the ground level and actually walk around that space. Trying to move things into the area instead of, hey, take a look, this is a picture. We want to get more interactive. As we know, young people moving up, and I've got a little one that's 10, he loves having an Oculus on. He loves that immersion. He wants to feel like he's there. He enjoys the video games as well, but he loves that immersion and being right around. Our clients are going to be moving that same direction. As you're building ideas out and concepts, they want that immersion and moving forward to it. Now, another thing we're doing, I like to take this snapshot of this video here. This is at MCD. Most people will never get to see this. This is inside of the HET telescope. Beautiful telescope. What we're doing is creating virtual walkthroughs of that space as well. For people that are unable to go to that space, having that virtual walkthrough and be able to see it as they move through. But what's key on this is researchers. Right now, if you want to get a new professor and a new researcher, a lot of times you bring them to the campus. That has cost. That's gas mileage, that is time, that's a lot of effort to bring them on campus. We are now scanning spaces for our researchers to be able to see what their lab is going to look like. Students, what is your dormitory actually going to look like before you get on campus? Parents, let's take a look around and see what these classrooms are. Saving that transfer time of them moving through because you know high-end professors are hard to get. Same with students. Tier one, we want the best football team. We'll get those parents to visit all those schools are hard, but if I can schedule a time and allow them to virtually walk the locker room of the football and see what that's gonna look like, or the research area, the space, a lab, or some of our satellite places, it's been allowing us to move forward because we don't look like everybody else. As you're going through walk, or coming and doing the tour, we can give that virtually and have that connection. And of course, at the end of the virtual tour, you can have a room where you can buy UT gear. We're going to need as much as we can for a big game against Alabama this weekend. It may not be pretty afterwards, but we've got to have that drive, and we've got to have that. And with that connection in, with that virtual, allows you to have those. So use the information we're collecting to move into the next step. The next thing we have going forward is inspection of buildings. A lot of us have pre-existing conditions. We have buildings that are already in the area. How do we keep up and maintain them? On the campus, we're utilizing drones on here. The reason why is because after a disaster, a hurricane or a tornado or a hurricane coming through, you're gonna have damage. 
And if any of y'all had to file insurance claims, you know the fight. How do we know that's not pre-existing? Well, now with the camera system drones, it's easy to get up there and capture that information. As we can see here, different issues that we've had on campus, capturing those with drones, using thermal. But getting up and getting spaces that normally would require scaffolding, a crane to get through, most of these inspections I can do in less than 10 minutes. How many of y'all have large size facilities that need that inspection being done to keep up with what's inside of it? The Hill Country, the studio that's going through, as they get that area built, if you have a leak in one of those buildings and it gets over a scene and destroys it, think of the damage. Or if you take your drone up in 10 minutes, you're going to know that there's an issue before you have that water penetrating and getting into it. Simple process that's out there right now that, again, if you want to know the procedure, we have a whole SOP moving forward with that concept. We want to share this information as much as possible getting out. Now, this one with the roof, I want to really push on this one. Before, the campus would have an individual get up on the rooftops and inspect all of UT's roofs. Now we're using drones. The reason why, this individual climbed a ladder on the second floor and slipped. He fell off the ladder, breaking three ribs. He's okay now. He's retired because of this. Costs the university $93,000 in medical expense. We don't put anyone on top of a roof now without having images to know someone should be up there. We don't want to put our people up there and put them in risk way when there's other technologies to solve that. Simple things and processes that can move forward. Now, the next thing I put up is a burn at the Wildflower Center. And if y'all could play this one, that would be great. As we know, Bastrop had the issues with the fires. A lot of agencies are coming through with drones, with thermal, and using this to move forward. And this is at the Wildflower Center. Now, this is a controlled burn. We tried to lower the amount of combustible material, so we burned it off before it gets too bad. And this is a drone image. We fly the site during the burn. As you can see, the buildings are close by the Wildflower Center. I report back to headquarters, so if something starts going away, we can send a fire truck over there to put that out as we're doing the controlled fire burn. But a lot of your law enforcement are moving this area and seeing the things that are going on. And if fires are coming out, you have drone teams that are going out and showing where those hot spots are, helping people plan. That way, you don't have your buildings impacted as much. We can see it from the air. This has been a huge step forward for the campus moving forward because we don't want to lose a lot of area, and we have a lot of space that we're doing this at. But the Bastrop fires coming through and finding that, huge impact. Most places right now are utilizing drones after a big fire to see the area, to plan how to repair it as we move forward. It's just something that needs to take into account. Now the next one I put up is a little something funny. With all good things, you have bad. With all innovation, you always have someone that's going to be pushing against you. This one right here is called UT Tower Girl. She's got more friends than I do on Facebook. Beautiful birds. She comes out. We have cameras on him. People watch. But Tower Girl does not like our innovation with the drones. Tower Girl goes after my drone, especially when she has eggs. So something to take into account when you're doing new, innovative ideas, things that you don't think of that will come out and be a hindrance to you. And we have a few of these on campus. Tower Girl is the most famous. But whenever I have my drone up in the air and she has eggs, I cannot be in the area. She will come after my drone. And I hate to say it, neither one of us will win that battle. She will take the drone out. She will also take herself out. And I'm going to have probably about three or 4,000 Facebook fans mad at me. So I don't want that. So when you're looking at the innovative ideas and moving forward with the drone stuff, look at your area and think of things that could be a hindrance. Either airports in the area that you may have to work around, issues with predatory birds, but also issues with people as you're moving forward. As you saw the first one, when they saw drones up in the air, people freaked out. When I talked about the metaverse a second ago, some people gave me like, oh my goodness, we're moving to the metaverse? What? It's getting over those and playing for the next five to 10 years. Whether we like it or not, things are going to keep moving forward one way or the other. We can either be on that cutting edge and moving forward, or we can be on the backside of that innovation. Use what we have today and with those research and be prepared for it. We don't want to be cut off guard and having to play catch up. 
This is the innovation corridor. This area should be moving forward. I know Texas State does some great stuff with the research, UT moving forward as, as well. Come to us and partner with us on these projects. See how we can work together as we move forward. One thing I didn't get to showcase because DOD asked me not to, is we've got a rover on campus with LIDAR. I call it the pet dog. You've probably seen videos of it and pictures of it. Uh, they're building it to come across uh, battlefields to scan it. But that same concept is being run through our campus right now, capturing that information out. Same thing can be done for your area as well. They're only doing it on campus because we don't have those partners out there to connect in with. Think of the PR that would have for your place if you have this and you're tying in with Texas State, UT, on your project and moving it forward as you're helping hand to hand. Look at those innovative ideas as we have those new concepts come out and reach out. We want to be a part of this process. Now, lastly, I always have my contact information up. Feel free to connect. University of Texas, the motto, what starts here, change the world. We don't move forward with anything without having those partnerships with everybody. And that's why I love presentations like this and be able to share this information with y'all. Most people don't realize the desperate need of research projects people have with. A lot of professors on campus, they need to have that connection. And if they don't have that connection, they're not going to get that research money coming through. We need to associate to be able to make those proposals as we move forward. And the only way to be able to do that is working together. And with $2 billion of new construction coming in, I would love to connect in with some of those, with that new technology we have out and see how we can work through and create a virtual walkthrough for that building that's done. Create that walkthrough space or that 3D image of the areas up on top. The technology is there. The people are there. Let's combine together and work as a win. Thank you all.